Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way, when I post new content, uh, you'll be aware of it right away. I decided to go with this match today because um, I went to this match. It's not far from my house. This was recorded at the University of Michigan. And uh, Nick Sirianno is just amazing to watch in person. I mean, the level of control that this guy has at this level of wrestling is phenomenal. I mean, it's it's like you don't get to see this sort of stuff every day. And who he's wrestling here, Pat McKee, took third in the country the year before. And then this is 2022. So McKee uh, was actually took fifth this year at the NCAAs, right? Nick Sirianno won it. Um in 2022 and remember so Suriano actually was a national champion at 133 then he tried to go to the olympics and the poor guy was ready for all of that to happen and competing in the appropriate you know tournaments to make that happen and then he tested positive for COVID 19 and uh so we never would have known what would have happened and i mean obviously that competition's extremely stiff thomas gilman ended up representing the united states and did an excellent job and they fought before or wrestled before so anyway uh the guy's amazing okay and he dropped down a whole nother weight class um because he wanted to stay at the around the 57 kilograms that he would be in international competition and so he he looks a lot thinner and i didn't know how he was going to do to be honest because i remember him at 33 he looked great so uh wow, this is a really nice to match to show Let's his go. footwork because he's got very unique Nick footwork. Sirianna it's something I want to cover in this match. National runner up, a national champion, Rutgers first ever. And then he graduated from Rutgers as a graduate transfer from Michigan. Going to end his career here. Spencer Lee out for the year. Nick Siriano down to 125. He won his national championship at 133. McKee, 15th seed last year in the NCAAs. The Red Shirt Junior. All right, this is a better angle for us to talk about stuff. So notice how uh, Suriano is leading with his right leg, but watch his leg, uh, his footwork, and you'll see he doesn't really have a lead leg. So he looks very right leg dominant right now, but watch this. Now he'll wrestle off his, his, his left leg. <laughs> and I think that this is really cool because it really keeps the opponent guessing and he's extremely good at when he switches his feet at not reaching um, and having the same arm, same leg out front like I've talked before. So basic. So, OK, I want to show you something here before I, before this sequence, because this is an amazing takedown. Now, it's my opinion and I but um, and I know that a lot of people that are watching this, maybe not so much wrestlers, but people who do jujitsu and want to learn more about wrestling, this type of hand fighting, don't do it. Okay. I'm here to tell you, I know that they do it a lot of international competition and all that kind of stuff. It's really not a good idea. It's just nothing good comes from it. I, I maybe it's just because I was never really great at it, but I like to catch people's hands coming in when I have all four fingers, but the interlocking thing, I've never found it to be useful for me because uh, it you can get caught up in it. And when you try to let go to take a shot, you could be kind of caught up and you can get hurt in there. I mean, uh, I just I didn't realize this until just recently listening to um, Mikey Musamenshi talking about how Geo broke his finger um, in these interlocking games. Right. So it can happen. And, you know, this, the rule in wrestling is, is that you usually have to clasp all four fingers. And most refs actually hate this. If this goes on too long, they, they'll knock, they'll smack your hands, especially in international competition. I just didn't play this game. I don't like it. I think it's a bad idea. But I will show you uh, what he does off of here, which is actually super cool. So he won't stay here. He's smart. Okay. McKee reaches out. They do this grip, and then he'll go right away. And then I'll break the, I'll break the takedown for you. Siriano, a Jersey boy. Bergen Catholic High School in on the single leg right here. Got it up there. Elbow deep, trip for the two. <laughs> and he gets her out right away. But what a what an awesome way to start a match. I can't go fast here because this is all the matches. I can't find this by itself. Um in terms of like this match by itself. It's it's all of the matches. So when I try to click back, I have to do it frame by frame. Cause if I click all the way back, it's just way 
puts me way out of place. Okay, so classic inside control here. Okay, now they're going to go to the interlocking of the fingers here. Suriano does not stay there long. All right, watch his. So what he's going to do is he's going to club hard on the head here. Club. And see how he's lowering his level when he does it? Look, he's ready. He lowers his level really hard. And he's already committing to this shot. And so he, and then, you know, I think what was happening was at this time, McKee was maybe trying to get his hand out. And, but either way, maybe he's using it. He's pushing it to the inside, clubbing, and it's got it just enough out of the way. And he snags this. See how he snags it real low? Okay. Why would you want to do that? You know, the rest of this is connected. So if this foot's flat on the ground and you snag it low, he cannot get it back now. Now he'll bring his body to it. So this isn't a low single like John Smith low single, but it is sort of a variation of it. It's more of a, a snatch. And he now brings his, but look, McKee, I mean, this guy's a high level wrestler. See how he's trying to control the inside part of the elbow there. That's the proper defense. I'm actually going to shoot a video pretty soon here where I'm talking about some stuff that Danaher showed in um, some variations off of the defense that he didn't show. He showed some offense, but um some from some handwork that he did and this the reason i'm prefacing it is because i want you to get used to the fact and if you saw the ironman thing that a way a classically trained wrestler uh learns things is stuffing arms down and blocking hands from coming across and so when you see people trying to you know go to one leg and then go to the other this is going to prevent him from being able to to go over to this leg easily. Okay. So keep that in mind. Cause I am going to talk about that. I'm going to shoot some video where I'm talking about some stuff that Danaher showed on his feet and why it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> but for now let's focus on this. So he clasps this. All right. And, and I see how perfect his head position is. So even, even though he's on both knees um, and I think he's a real strong human being. Okay. But that's not what's winning this battle right now. It's his awesome position. His back is extremely straight. See how he gets now he gets his elbow behind the knee. So now that the elbow is behind the knee, see how tight that is there. Um, he's in great position. Um, he does what most people won't do, which is step up with this leg, but notice how he doesn't step up way behind him. He's, he's, he's real close. And I think it's because he's so well-versed in wrestling that he knows that McKee is looking for that leg to, to step up. And when he does, he might dive to that leg and then they get caught in a stalemate position. So he, he, he stays real close. And you notice how I showed this, talked about this before in a video uh, with Nikki Ryan about how, that guy started from the wrestle up position and that leg was way behind here. And I said, you could kick it out and put him to his back. That's not what's happening here. See his position's amazing and his foot is not behind. So he can't get, so McKee can't kick his foot out. Okay. And then throw him to his side. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my video with Nikki Ryan where I break down his um, in practice wrestling. And that guy that he was rolling with uh, started with a wrestle up position and he had his foot way behind here, which is bad because you can get thrown to the side where there's no post. OK, but he's not doing that. It's it's underneath him and it's out to the side here. So he can stand up with that leg. It's it's un it's unusual uh, at this level, but I can I know why he's doing it. He's brilliant. He knows he's trying to stop McKee from see McKee's already starting to you know want to hop over here and he's shutting that down and his position, look at how tight he is. Now, when I saw this in person, I remember being like, I can't believe he gets to the legs this easily. And it was so well controlled that, that when he brought him to the mat hard, it made some noise, but it seemed extremely controlled. So then now look, he's going to see shelving it on the leg. Like I've taught. Okay. And then watch this. Like I told you, I don't make this stuff up. See how he's got his, he's got his foot on the heel to bring it up. See how he's got his foot on the heel and he's got his hand underneath the elbow there and it brings that leg really close. Okay. Now Suriano likes to switch to underneath uh, to the grip where he puts it up under his armpit. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, See, so he switches there. Okay. So that's a nice, he does a little variation off there, but what he does is he's lifting, okay, he's got some tension here, and he's going to time him. He's hopping, and then he catches him right there, right on the calf. And I mean, this is a hell of a way to be introduced to a wrestling match. Um, and it was it was pretty loud when I was there, but it seemed just so incredibly controlled and so effortless the way that he does this. And it just, he catches the timing, okay, and catches him. See how he caught him, like, low, 
right? And he doesn't wrap it. See, like a lot of people, they like hook it. Like I've seen that guy Faraz, like the the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, and he like wraps his leg around. That's terrible because then you get you get caught up in it. So he doesn't wrap it. See, he does the foot hook like I showed you. And then see how he lets go. And then now he follows him down beautifully. No space. This guy gives you no space. That's the one thing that you can learn from Suriano for sure is he is on you. Um, and McKee gets out pretty quick. So let's just watch that one more time here. Siriano, so he snaps down, right? So oh, that's such a great little sequence there. So hand wrist lock watch is going to do club, snag the ankle, bring his body to it, you know, not over extending himself in any way, and then lifts and trips. Club, bang. Bergen Catholic High School in on the Such good control. Right here, got it up there. And he doesn't waste any time, but he doesn't freak out either. That was textbook the way that Serrano kept his head up right there and closed the gap so well. McKee and you notice too, so McKee is a great wrestler. Um, McKee, right off the bat, one of the things I love about Minnesota wrestlers is they're very, they're very tough. And so McKee had, see, look at this underhook heads on the right side and he goes to use it right away. He's not afraid. You know, he wants to win this match. He's not just in it to try to like be there. He wants to win, right but watch how when Suriano does pumbles his head, his head back in, you see that. So he knows Suriano knows that McKee has amazing position. It could go for that shot right away. And I mean, it happens so fast. I am looking at this saying, why didn't he take a shot off that? And I know because I wrestled in this league, how quickly things happen, but that was his chance right here would have been his chance right when he's coming up to shoot and snag the inside of that leg there with the underhook on the side. Cause there's not a whole lot for it to stop him, but you know, look what happened to him just a second ago, he was on his back. And so it's psychologically, you're still slightly recovering from that. Right. So Soriano circles his head back over so that now McKee's move is gone. And then now he can back out. Now they go forehead to forehead. Like I've talked about before, you don't want to go ear to ear forehead to forehead. Now, McKee doesn't know which direction he's going to go. He's right leg forward, but he could be left leg forward. As you've seen, he can switch both sides. See, he's very unique in this regard. He's left leg forward. He was right leg forward. And it, it really makes the offense for this guy difficult because you don't know when he's going to do it. And so it's difficult to time his foot coming in. Down two to one. That was a stupid call, by the way. Stalemate during the middle of wrestling. It was just a takedown 10 seconds ago. He didn't like the fingers, but still. Next time he thinks the person is activating those fingers a little too much, he'll call a warning. How cool is that? Do you see? Suriano is so cognizant of what's going on in the middle of a match. Um, the more you wrestle, the less nervous you get out there. And watch McKee's trying to interlock his hand. What? Look what he's doing. So look, see how he won't do it. He's showing the ref, I'm obeying what you're saying. Like, I'm not doing it. You'll call a warning for See that? It's brilliant, man. The guy's got so much time on a mat. And look how his stance isn't really low. So everybody complains about that. I've heard people in, you know, circles complain about him, which I'm like, really? Get out of here. He's way better than you'll ever be. But he doesn't He doesn't stand too low. This stance is is beautiful. It's I taught some stance stuff and I said, don't stand too low. He's, you know, in a very powerful position because he's, he's very athletic um, from that stance, not saying like gifted athletic, if athletic position Sorry, where he's not too low. So his head's not too low. And then oh, let's go back a second and uh, not too high, but his hands are low. Right. So he's, he's, he's standing up and his hands aren't, he's not reaching too much. So let's back it up a little bit here and then watch this sequence. In the center of the mat. In on that single, cuts across to the double, drives through. A little scramble action, no two yet. There's the two points. Second takedown inside. All right, so that's a second takedown all within about 30 seconds here. He's got another takedown. Okay. okay watch this. Okay, so... See how he the, the camera angle changed, okay? <clears throat> but he keeps switching his feet up, all right? So now he goes left leg forward. Watch this. Left leg forward, okay? He lowers his level, and he's just going to – and look, see, he's, he's expecting McKee to reach down and block this. So he's got his hand here near the elbow, 
and he snags this. Okay. And he gets past his other hand and he just pulls his body to it and he pulls him and see how he, how he pulled his knees bang when he gets in this deep. And so he's see where his hands are too. see how he's low. This is preventing the sprawl. This is a really important leg on this side. This leg's important too, but this far one is really what's going to keep him close to him when he's when he's in on the shot. Okay. And then now what he does is he gets his he gets his body under it and he lifts. Okay. So that was like a torso lift there. Okay. Cause you see his knees aren't off the ground yet. But his his back is so straight, refs in the way. And then great photograph right there, huh? And then look, he comes up and see how he's still low on that far ankle? And just windmills him over here. Now, McKee, okay, is doing part of this because what he's going to do is try to reach down and grab his ankle here. Um, and he rolls through a little bit. He was going for that ankle. McKee, uh, Soriano obviously knows that. Stays low, okay, on that leg by staying low. See how he's got the inside grip there? Look at that. So he's not on the outside of it anymore. How did he switch to that? Where, at what point did he do that? That was, see, at what point did he go from being on the outside leg to going to the inside? See how here's on the outside? See how he's on his calf? Okay. Now, at some point, let's watch this hand here. I know it's kind of blurry because it's happening so fast that he ends up is that his hand over there? Where's his hand? Okay. So it's his, it's not that hand. It's the inside one. The one that was on the left. That's brilliant. So, okay. So this hand will end up going to the inside of the ankle. Okay. So there, that's okay. Here we go. We're all coming around. And then he stays on this near leg. <clears throat> but he switches his grip from being on the outside to being on the inside. Let's see if I can get this clear so you can see it. Okay. Let's see. Right. See how he's see how his, his forearm is now on the inside on this on that side of the ankle. And this arm now came around the outside like the double. And what this is doing is he's able to fold this leg in. Because if he had stayed on the double here, McKee would have been able to shove his head down and cover it with his hips. But I don't even know how he got to that because that was brilliant. But you see how he never could get this ankle back because he was inside on the shin on the ankle. So now he finishes the takedown. Let's see if we can see it in fast motion. Maybe I can see how he's doing it. Soriano doing a good job of controlling the center of the mat. In on that single, cuts across to the double, drives through. Yeah, and then so you can see he's on the inside now. You know, and this is the thing, okay, about this level of wrestling. You know, for most people who are, and by the way, look at the, and I, I showed this recently where I was talking about uh, bringing the Russian down to the to the ground. And then I said, when I take somebody down, I'm on them like glue, right? Like I said that, and, and, I, and you know, I, I, this level is extremely hard. You have to learn how to wrestle that way. But watch how he's glue. See how his hips drop? And so for those of you guys who are presser, pressure passers in jujitsu, know the importance of not lifting your hips up after you already have you know the pressure pass going for you watch how when he climbs up he's not in a hurry to do it and you see how his how his legs stayed super close and he's on his toes even though he's squeezing him here okay and he can ride when he wants to by the way i've seen him he rode um uh austin DeSanto out like crazy in the ncaa's when he needed to so back in when he was at 33 go down to 125 um, he hasn't lost that strength. So when he wants to ride, he can. He's got heavy pressure. He's just such a. He's just so good on his feet. So that's two takedowns in two minutes. Less than two minutes. The best way to do that is what Soriano has done quickly in this first period. A couple of. He's right leg forward right now. He just it's like a blast double there. But then he goes to the path of least resistance. And see that. He's so smart that he waited to get the count. So he's just so experienced that, that done quickly see how he gets past the hands here. Of takedowns. Okay, so what he did was he he actually was able to level change here. So McKee's head was lower than his. 
and watch what he does. Seeing how he, he comes up with that club, you can't see it well, but he's got a big club over here, and he's going to pull his head down. And McKee's first reaction is to pull up. So when you pull somebody's head down, they they resist it. And so he knows that. And so he's dropping his level as he's doing it and then lets go and gets past his elbow here because he, he pulled his head down. And when McKee was coming up, the elbows actually usually flare out. And then he goes for the double. But you see McKee had his arm inside here on the underhook. OK, so he kept this arm low which is the appropriate defense to do. And then now look, I mean, he's, he's trying to apply this pressure, man. I mean, McKee's heavy hips right here. Okay. And he's doing a good job <clears throat> at preventing it from happening. And Suriano switches now to the outside single. Okay. And now watch how smart this is, right? He, he stays low. He doesn't come up to the waist, which is why he gets the takedown. Okay. For those of you who have been watching my channel, you know how much I hate when people come up to the waist. And I am going to do a video on this soon where Dana Hurst suggesting that people go from single legs to the waist, which I vehemently disagree with because the statistical data are completely in disagreement with it. In fact, single legs and high crotches have the highest percentage of, of offensive leg attacks, highest percentage or highest number of attacks, very high percentage finish, lowest level of, of defensive finish, meaning that they're very low risk, whereas coming up to the waist results in um, high level defensive finishing. So you're actually giving up a very low risk move for a very high risk move with less percent uh, chance of finishing it. So that's why I hate that. Okay. But look what he does. It's like, I've taught this in the video when I came back around, it's like it was video number one. Um, yeah, definitely video number one. So look, so he's going to now switch low to this ankle. And then the far hand is on that far ankle. Now in the sport of wrestling, having both ankles is a takedown and see where his foot is. He's in bounds. McKee's mostly out of bounds, just barely his heels in bounds. And Suriano's right here. And he knows that he's got excellent mat awareness. He's got that ankle right there. And he waits for the ref's call. The two -time see? All -American for Michigan. see, he waited. And then the ref gave the signal and then he drove him out of bounds. Michigan's head man. They got a nice shot right there. So not only is this just like super high level technical wrestling in terms of like what he's doing, but it's it's high level mat awareness. Pretty classic. Um and interaction with the referee. Really like the way So one thing I like about the way he starts too is he doesn't give this guy any understanding of which side he's coming from. He's way behind him. And notice by the way, they're gonna caution him. And it, I'll tell you, man, for, for as many false starts as there actually are in wrestling that they don't call, it's amazing when they do call them because most of the time these guys just go right away and the ref sometimes moves his hand and then doesn't blow the whistle. And then so you're like, well, I'm watching for your signal to move your hand and not blow the whistle, but they caution him. Signs, he goes right away. Here we go, Red. Get set. Wait. Cover. See, he moved. He moved before they blew the whistle the second time. It's such a dumb. So, tell you, man, there's some things that need to be changed in wrestling, and I get it, like the whistle blowing and everything. At this level, I mean, it's like false starting, and people are basically anticipating when the gun goes off on a sprint anyway. I know that they have sensors and all that, but still. All right, this is another thing that I want to show here, and he does this a number of times. This is a classic, beautiful, perfect mat return. Okay, watch this. All the stuff that people are doing now, I don't get it because it doesn't work. They've seen plenty of jujitsu guys lifting from straight behind. I actually chuckle a little bit when I watch some of the matches where people are like go butt, hip to butt, <laughs> like right behind them and lift. It's so hard to lift somebody that way. You don't, don't do it. This is how you lift somebody. Watch this, okay? I'm not laughing because it's like making fun. I'm laughing because it's like, so much extra work. Um, this is how you properly do it, okay? So see how he steps in front here? And then now look. See, look how he loads up his hips, and then he will lift and then hit him with his hip right there. That's what takes this leg out. So when I watch these guys in jiu-jitsu lift from straight behind a guy and then twist their arms to get their legs to come out, that's not what he's doing, okay? It's his hip, and it's this front leg that's – blocking this leg and that's what's causing 
um, the, the legs to fly up in the air. Okay. So once again, all right. So he takes a big step, you pick a side, okay. You pick a side and then you hit him with you, you, step in front here and then see how he loads him up and then he hits him with his hips see how his hips went forward so that's what makes him fly up like that and then as soon as they come down he's looking for wrist control okay i was always taught to do it on this side but if he gives you the cross wrist that's even better and i think he has it to penn state he does he has the cross wrist so as soon as you return a guy to the mat now he's got a cross wrist he's going to, now he's going to do it again see where he is see how he's loaded up here and, you know, and I've seen so many, hear so many people say like, oh, people are so strong. It's not the strength. It's the, it's technique. It's easy to lift somebody from the side. It's difficult when they're leaning forward and pushing their butt out. You can't stand behind them and lift them. And I see all these guys that are, these jujitsu guys are way more muscular than any like wrestlers. Okay. Well, not any, but most of them. And, you know, they're having difficult time lifting somebody because you don't have a mechanical advantage. So you have a mechanical advantage when you when you go to the side. Okay, so now, okay, we're starting the second period. And watch this clock, okay? So if you're not a wrestler, this is a riding time clock. This means that Suriano at this, when he started from the bottom, had more than a minute of riding time. So if this minute, if, he, if you're in control on somebody on top for more than a minute, at the end of the match, you get an extra point. This will come into play. So notice how it's going backwards. So important that's right because here. McKee's on top. That's the kind of effort by okay, Suriano. so McKee's on top, and so that's it reversing the riding time. The bottom because I'm sure and so if it goes goal, under, if it's 59 goal. seconds, so he's complaining that he's slippery right now, by the way. In this top 10 matchup, to have that nice first period is huge for Serrano going into this, this match. Now watch this. This is cool, okay? Uh, I remember when this happened, I was like, what is going on? See this? So he's going to his knee because it's illegal to lock hands in wrestling. And because Suriano is so cognizant of everything going on in the match, he's looking at the ref and he's saying, look, he's locking his hands because his knee's on the mat. So he went to his knee on purpose because he didn't get out fast enough. So the riding time is null, null, right? There's no riding time now. And he's so like just clever that he's thinking to himself, well, I want to get that point back. So I'll get it back by getting a locking hands call on him, which will give me a point so I can get my so I can get my point back that I just lost from riding time. And the ref hates it. Nope, nope, nope. That's unsportsmanlike. That's one point red. You can't do that. You're baiting it. So he so he hits him with he hits him with a uh, which I've never seen before, honestly, um, a unsportsmanlike call saying you're baiting him and they trying to get lock a locking hands call. <laughs> and he hits him. So not only has he now lost his riding time point, um, which he can get back if he rides him for, you know, if he gets out and then he takes him down or if Nikki chooses bottom and he can add a few more seconds, he'll get that point. Right. But now he's lost it. So now it's going to be three to six. But look how he handles it. That's one thing I really like about this guy. OK, he watch how he handles it. OK, he says, you're right. That's it. He never opens his mouth to the ref. Don't ever open your mouth to the ref. You can nod and and, and look at him. He never talks to the referees. See? <laughs> now, okay, whoever's managing the clock was behind by a second, which is annoying. But. Out from under McKee, that was huge. Nick Siriano, the nation's number one ranked intermat wrestling number one ranked one hundred twenty-five pounder. Primarily reaching with the leg that's not out front. Period against Patrick McKee. We're in the first match like that. of this Minnesota. He switches his legs up. Look at that. To remember for the Big Ten Network, two points. That was just sort of like a pass by. We can go back there. Intermat wrestling. Number one ranked 125 pounder out in front seven to three in the second period against Patrick McKee. We're in the first match of this Minnesota at Michigan. Hand control. In dual meet. Yeah, so he did a nice. So he has hand control, left hand there, right? And then he clubs him down hard. So you notice how many things he gets off the club? And he's not locking up with him ear to ear like so many people do, and they call it the clinch or whatever. Like it's useless position. See how he's forehead to forehead here, pretty much. And he smashes his head down and then he goes for the outside single, right? Switches off to it there, 
right? He tries to come to the double here. McKee's like, I could probably try to run away. Tries to do a forward roll, and now he's two points. Take down he got he followed him well, so he got another two. But like, look, he only got you know two more seconds of riding time on the clock from that. That's how quickly McKee's getting out. I mean, like this guy's this guy's amazing. Okay, you know, third in the country and then fifth in the country. That's a horrible call. Horrible call. He just got taken down, and he's just recovering from that. Like, and he hits him for stalling. Warning. <laughs> it's not stalling. Beautiful mat return. Um, His positioning is incredible. Talking about the intensity of Soriano. He's got the attention of the official. So yeah, when he switches his feet up, it messes people up a lot. Okay, so at that point, he had hit another little. So he's got two hands on the head now, right? And he's lowering his level, and McKee's going, you know, like, hey, this is not going to work out for me. So he just follows him. See how he's, see how, see how he's like a he, – his stance is so good. Okay, watch Soriano, okay? Watch how much McKee's ending up moving. See how Soriano is hardly moving? And then see how he just lowers his level and then just dives on that? Dives on it, right? And then look at, look at the wrist control. This is totally different. Then coming up to the waist, he's got wrist control. It's different for like a, just abandoning and going to the waist. Plus, he's behind him, so it would be okay. But so, you, look, he's got him trapped now. He's got wrist control and trapped. So this isn't like coming to the waist in the classic sense. He's, and, then, and then he does a classic mat return again. And he uses McKee's motion to actually make it better. So he's going to follow him here, and he comes up. He's got a trapped far wrist. Lift kick and see how he's 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 getting that to come out because he's hitting him with his hips right there okay and then now that far wrist has got a ton of control he's bringing him way down to the mat hard return it sends a message somebody stands up on you mat return him the proper way yes it takes some energy on your part but it sends a real message is really impressive i mean it doesn't look and now he's trying to get his riding time back up quickly change directions about the third takedown you know, it's interesting here. It's probably as good as Suriano. So I'm surprised they didn't hit uh, Suriano for stalling there. Then they give him a, 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 an escape, which is uh, not the best call in the world, but whatever. I mean, he, was, he wasn't all the way out. They, they were they went off the mat and blew the whistle. Then he gave him one. Which, whatever. And now he's going to complain. He's all slippery. Folk style for a couple of years and getting back into that. Uh, after his, uh, this isn't normal, by the way. His head, something's wrong with his headgear. It's not like they don't have like breaks in collegiate wrestling. This is his headgear is broken and the dumb rule that you have to wear headgear anyway. So they check him. You're not. He's just sweating. National champion Nick Siriano. And for those of you that haven't gotten inside the head of Siriano, most haven't. I mean, this guy just wanted to be and still wants to be the best wrestler in the world and you can't blame him for going ahead and taking some of those years um i haven't been able to even follow the whole story of where he's wrestled and all that he's a tough kid um, you know i mean he wants to get back in there you know he he wants to get back in there he's not like afraid of this guy which is so that's what makes collegiate wrestling by the way so amazing all of these guys believe they can win started at penn state and injury ended his year his freshman year there see that's where you notice how he that's a threat I think if he could have gotten it, he would have taken it. But watch what happened. I mean, this is just a slight mistake from McKee to reach with that same arm, same leg. Just a, I mean, it happens so fast. Look, he reaches, and Suriano's like good. He's wrestled already, by the way, at, a, at the very, very high level. Um, see how? It, oh my God! Look, this is literally what I showed on one of my videos about coming to, snapping off at the wrist. Okay. Like I'm not making this stuff up. Okay. See how he's snapping at the wrist and then it, it got inside and now he tries it. It was because he reached with the same arm, but you see how McKee's doing the proper defense, which was he stuffs his arm straight down to create a little bit of space, which I actually said in that same video. Yes, he could. Yes. You have to understand that that's an option better to post. If you can snapping the wrist off's great because it makes them fall forward. Um, but at this level, that's enough. You know, for him to get out. Plus, also look, McKee's got far. See how he's got his his all four fingers here on the other side. 
Like, dude, McKee's the real deal. Okay. See how he's got his hand under control over there. And when he shoots here, McKee's got control over that. And he's got, he shoves his hand straight down, which in the video, I'm going to show you uh, next video that I'm going to make on a some sequence that Danaher was showing. I'm going to show you this defense. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's essential to why I think what Danaher showing doesn't work. Um, anyway, that's just a little preface. Um, from what he's doing from the wrestle up is great, but what he's doing from the standing position, I think doesn't translate hundred percent like he thinks it does. So, so that sequence doesn't work, but I want to show you that that's what he's doing, right? He reaches that same arm to the leg, so he threatens that. Okay, and and the reason I'm I'm making these comments on these things, like and what I'm going to show you and, and all that, is because you know the things that I'm showing you are founded in reality. Okay, like at this level. You have to assume that everybody knows the proper defense. And so when you're doing wrist control stuff, like which is Dan or her showing, the person knows the proper defense when you go to fake for a certain leg and how to put their hand straight down like McKee just did. So you have to assume that that's going to happen if you try to cut across to the other leg. So like the which single, I think he calls it, Dan or her. Um, why, so, okay, that now this is a smart move, why, why it won't work. So, let's see here. Definitely better. So watch this. So he goes to lift now on purpose. This is a smart move because it's like McKee keeps standing up and he wants to, you know, get as much riding time as he can. Um, he lifts and he needs to, he's also keeping the score in mind. He wants to win by more than eight because if he does, it's a major decision for his um, team. But he's going to lift and then he's going to do what's called a Turk, which for you guys who do jujitsu is actually like half guard position for the bottom guy. So watch this. See how he's, see how he's trying to then step over that leg. Like he wants to be in half guard ish like position. Okay. So see, he's kind of in it now. And if he can lift this leg and then cross face this guy to his back, he'd be able to get a ton of great points and it's very difficult to get out of, but he never did secure the leg. Starting on top, not but that was the whole purpose of him coming out in front and doing that. Okay, so now he's got a leg in and he actually does some really old school wrestling here. Like this man, that's surprisingly really old school. I'm, su I'm surprised he he likes this move. I'm mean, hard to argue with the guy. He's a two-time national champion now, but um, this is not how I was taught how to ride legs because this, when I was wrestling, was considered super old school. We we rode the guy like a horse, like on top. But it is a, a good position to sort of stall in because since he's cross body, this ref can't say you're parallel riding and, and then you know hit him for top man stalling. They don't like parallel riding. They say that you're not know, trying to get out to the side to pin them. But, that, McKee has that knee taped and but if you have two legs in or one leg in, like, outside. but riding them like a horse, you know, like on a saddle, like straight behind them, and you're going to a power half or something, they can't say that you're stalling because you are working for a pin. Second caution. So he got a caution there again for um, jumping the gun. You get two cautions, and then the guy will get a point if there was a third one. Go ahead and risk some of having some of those so now questions. he's trying to go to the claw claw here and lift to he take him to his back because suriano wants the points now he's always got control over that wrist so mckee's gotten zero takedowns by the way all of these points are escapes and a point from the um you can't beat a fast start it's hard to unsportsman like you're on the other side of that The only thing you could ask for if you're a Michigan coach is, could you get some back points? One more takedown and some back points. Well, he's um, trying to. Been, uh, he's trying to get back points. points. That's why he went to the Turk. Why he's trying to lift him and take him to his back. So right now he's up by five, but technically up by six. Now, now he's technically up by eight. Riding time is secured. Okay. That means he's going to get the riding time, but it also means that he needs to keep him down this whole time. Okay. You get an extra point. It's three points for a regular decision, four for a major decision. That's eight to uh, fourteen. And if it's a fifteen-point spread, yeah. So it's eight. He's up by eight technically because he's got riding time. But if McKee got an escape, then he wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't win the match by major decision. So. Now he's going to do everything in his power to hold him down for 20 seconds. So the ref's counting because you're not allowed to stay down there. That's stalling, according to them. He's up. Nice so he, you get five seconds, and Suriano's awesome at using hips. all that time. 
But you can get hit for stalling if you don't return him to the mat also. And see how he's trying to keep his foot in bounds? He's trying to keep his foot in bounds to run the clock. So that's how mad aware he is. So it's over. Um, but Miki, all the way to the end, right? Two seconds left. He's like, if I get out, then my team... He only gets a minor decision, which is three points for the team. But if he doesn't get out, it's a major decision. Now it's, it's done. Okay, so now it's 14 to 6 because of the riding time. And that's a major decision. But it shows you how incredibly knowledgeable of the mat this uh, young man is. And uh, what a what a great um, season he had um, dropping down another weight class. And he, he was a big 33 pounder even. So going down to 25 is a lot of willpower this guy has. And you can see how much control. Yeah, I hope that uh, you like what I'm showing and I'm trying to preface what I will be showing. And the reason is, is because I see this as a very long-term thing. I want to teach you um, using a number of different sources myself and then other people, a lot of collegiate wrestling, uh, hopefully and international too of what proper position is and not everybody has to wrestle the same way, but the fundamentals are the same, you know, the way that their stances are, you can see like with Nick Lee, Ironman, and then now Patrick McKee, Nick Suriano, uh, what really good stances are and why it's so effective and why it's so hard to get past people's hands and how they're using their hands for defense and why you have to get past the head, have to get past the hands. And now there's a few different ways that we've seen how it's done. And there was a lot of clubbing he did, you know, to get to these positions, um, you know, to drop the head and then outside single. But he's not doing anything fancy, you notice. You know, he's not doing the next best new move, the newest move and all of that. He's using very simple, basic wrestling to win matches. OK, that's why he's a two time national champion. And you have to keep that in mind. I know that it's fun to watch people wrestle and do all these weird moves and stuff. But, you know, you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, are those the people who are winning national titles? Are those the people who are going to the world team? Are those the people who are going to the Olympic team? No, they're not. OK, show me some examples of people who do some really, really weird, freaky stuff. And then I will maybe show you examples of where maybe they're just like a complete freak of nature and it's very rare or that it, they didn't go as far as you think that they did. Because I've watched some really awesome like, you know, uh wrestling from other countries and they try some really risky stuff, but then you end up finding out like what happened to that person. I mean, they're still amazing. Okay. It's just that like the fundamentals always win. They always, always win. And you can't do the freaky stuff until you have the fundamentals down. And then you have to ask yourself when you know those freaky moves too, is it worth it? Is it worth bailing out on a single leg to come to the body lock, which is what I'm going to show you next, okay? The video that I'm going to cover. And it's a video that John Danaher posted about dropping off, you know, getting to a single leg and abandoning a perfectly good single leg to come to a body lock, which statistically has a lower risk of finishing and statistically has the, the highest rate of reversal, meaning that the highest defensive scoring, a 20% reversal rate when you come up to the body. OK, and there's a reason why Division One wrestling, only two to four percent of the takedowns that are that are done in collegiate wrestling um, are are upper body attacks, like not throw buys and front headlocks. That's a different category, but body locks. OK, pancake throws, that kind of thing. Lowest number of attempts because it has the highest risk. Single legs not coming up to the waist, lowest risk, highest reward. OK, so I'm grounded in science my my job is i am a scientist and i follow math data okay and the data shows not the philosophy the data shows that staying short like with your offense you know and not extending yourself if you go reaching for a body lock that kind of thing like those are the things that are going to get you in trouble okay so i hope that you guys learn something from this i hope uh that this is something that you'll take away and um, until next time, and please, like, if you have questions and things, I have no problem with you leaving that. You know what I mean? I might joke around with you a little bit if you tell me that none of this is going to work, <laughs> but, um, you know, or whatever. But uh, please, like, leave comments because I, I, I 
it, this is how you learn, you know, is just putting your, putting your neck out there and asking me some questions and some comments and we'll have some, you know, back and forth. Um, and then, you know, at, tell me what you want to see and I will post it for you. Okay. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, like, and subscribe. If you haven't already hit the notification bell and until then I'll see you next time.